to the channel Simply Minis. I'm your host, Jason, if you haven't been here before. Um, I've been doing some walkthrough videos of some of the bikes that I own, some of my favorite bikes. Uh, the first, this will be the second bike I'm doing a walkthrough on, and this one is also a billet wear frame bike. So this one also has a significantly rare frame on it. Um, the idea behind this billet wear bike and the other KLX 110 billet wear bike is I kind of just wanted to have one of each of the cool billet wear frames that billet wear had made. So I, this bike, I haven't completely finished it. I haven't really actually gone through it. Um, this is another bike that I found built. Uh, the next two walkthrough videos that I do will be bikes that I actually built from the ground up. Um, so we're going to go through the bikes that I had purchased built first, but it just has so many cool parts on it. I wanted to share it with you guys. Uh, let's get to it. So let me start out by saying this is a CRF 70 billet wear mod. This is not a KLX 110. It's not a China bike. It's not anything weird. It's no off brand stuff. This is a straight up billet wear frame CRF 70. Um, this has Gen 1 Zokes on it and a BBR Super Pro MX swing arm. We'll go through everything. We're going to start with the frame itself. So this is similar to the KLX 110 frame. Uh, it doesn't have the gap in the center like the KLX 110 frame has. But it is a double tube design. Um, coming under here, you can see... It also has a separated motor mount. Now, when I got that, that motor mount was cracked. Um, I'm assuming from this Daytona 190. So I'll tell you the, date, the details on this Daytona 190, but this thing makes some really good power. But I basically took that motor mount off, beefed it up, re-welded it. Um, not to say that billet wear's motor mounts aren't strong. This just particular motor has a lot of kick. So... I don't really think when these frames were made, they were really designed for like 190 power. They were more designed for like your 124 uh, Kitako CRF 50 built engines or anything Honda based. But that is the same design, KLX 110, just like the KLX 110, it is separated engine mount. Um, you can see, you know, billet wear kind of lightens up the frame anywhere they can. They always mark everything. This has got the billet wear logo right there. Really neat. This is also a cradle frame. So you can see it comes all the way down and it sandwiches between the foot peg and the motor, just like the KLX 110 billet wear frame. Now, as you can see, this is actually a Anima 150 motor. Now, this motor was built a ways back the cylinder was sent out for plating to Millennium, I believe the company was, Millennium Cylinder Plating. I think that's the name. Don't, don't hold me accountable for that. But it was uh, welded, bored, and plated to be able to run a custom CRF 150R forged piston. So by doing that, with the stroke of the crank and the now new bigger size piston, it ends up being basically a short stroke 190. So I've really enjoyed this motor. Uh, it's definitely something different than I'm used to. I think it's really delivers some power. It has a Kian PE28 carburetor on it, which some people say they have a hard time tuning these. I really haven't had a hard time playing with these. Uh, I am definitely gonna do a jetting video for you guys in the future. But uh, the Kian PE28 and the VM26 are definitely the carbs that I use the most. But definitely a cool little motor, something different. Uh, this was built by uh, Chad Norman. They call him Stormin Norman. He is on the Planet Minis 2.0 forum on Facebook, and he still does do custom engine work. He's not cheap but he's definitely one of the best. So you get what you pay for in that situation. So any type of motor build that you want, or if you want a stock head ported, or you even want an aftermarket head worked, that's your guy. I mean, he will definitely take care of you. Just got an old school fast 50 shifter on there. 
definitely pretty neat. Fastway Evo pegs, first generation. It's got a straight peg mount bar on it. Now, I'm not sure whose peg mount bar this is. It's definitely an old school straight peg mount bar, which you don't see too many of those. But uh, I left it on there because it's beefy, solid for sure. Um, let's move up to the front end. Actually, let me get a shot of that aluminum subframe for you guys because on the KLX 110, it's painted. So you can't see it as well, but it is definitely aluminum. This bike is really light. It is even lighter than the KLX 110 billet wear platform significantly lighter now on this bike we have a gen 1 set of zokes so on this bike you have compression adjustment on one side rebound adjustment on the other side no adjustments on the bottom like a set of gen 2 zokes where you have compression down here on both sides and rebound up here so i actually don't mind gen 1 zokes I still think they're good forks if you set them up properly. Uh, I usually do 10 weight in the compression leg and 15 weight in the rebound leg. If you do 10 weight in the rebound leg, they seem to really not have as much rebound capability as like a Gen 2 front end. But um, on this bike, this has a set of CMC CRF 70 clamps. So these are specific to this bike. They are not modified. It does not have a modified stem. They are actually made for a 70 full mod to be able to fit Zokes to them. So these forks were built by Pro Action. They feel really good. I did not build these forks. They came that way. Um, they're a little bit soft for me. I am definitely going to have to do some modification to them because they're probably more for like a 175 pound rider as to where I'm a 200 pound plus rider. They do have gold stanchions in them, which are beautiful. Those are the FKF, SKF seals. Those are the ones that I'd recommend you go with if you're going to do any work on your forks. SKF is the seal to go with. Now this bike came with a knockoff brake on it. That is not a KX65 brake. Um, I definitely do intend on changing it and running a bigger rotor, so a 200 millimeter, ah, 200 millimeter rotor. This is a KX65 factory 180 millimeter rotor. Now, this set of forks, which is part of the reason why I wanted to show you guys this bike, is I've been talking about fitting a set of KX65 wheels to a KLX110 Zoke setup, because technically these legs on this are KLX110. They didn't make really like a CRF 70 designated kit. These legs are the same legs that you would get in a Gen 1 set of Zokes for a KLX 110. Now, if you look in here, you can see on a set of KX 65 wheels, there's usually a bushing in here. Um, uh, not so say a bushing, more of a cover that covers the bearing. When you fit these to a set of Zokes, you have to ditch those. So the cover's off. That's actually the OEM spacer in there from a set of KX65 wheels. But on this side, as you can see, there is no, there is no factory KX65 bushing in here. This is literally the shank of the KLX110 axle. And it goes in all the way and butts up against the ax or butts up against the bearing. So that's how you get a KX65 wheel to fit. You have to completely ditch the the spacer on this side, and this the axle itself becomes the spacer because it has this fat lug on it, and it actually butts up to the uh, OEM bearing perfectly and will make it work. And then this side has the factory KX65 spacer on it. So right there, just a quick way to see how it fits. I'll actually show you guys in one of the video, definitely in more depth. But if there's somebody out there that's trying to figure it out now, that's how it works. Um, these are Excel wheels. I have another set of wheels for this bike. These ones are a little bit beat up. Um, they definitely could be, you know, use a re-anodizing. But uh, 
let's move on to the rear end here. This is a BBR Super Pro Swinger. Uh, this is a plus five for 50s and 70s. They made a plus three and a plus five. The plus five one is the desirable one. As usual, Vortex Sprocket. That's a, uh, this is also a KX65 hubbed wheel back here. Um, same thing, just worked on, you know, spacing. This is a DMC spacer that comes with their uh, rear caliper KX65 mounting kit. And on this side is the actual mount itself. And you can see how that all spaces out. Now this is tight right here. You can see where the bolt passes. The actual caliper mount is very tight. That's something I got to work on. But when you do do KX65 wheels, that's something you need to pay attention to. Uh, a lot of guys don't pay attention to that. And then it ends up hitting and it tears up your gear caliper mount, tears up your hub, tears up everything. You got to be really careful with that. Uh, normally what I do is I actually run bolts that are a little bit more countersunk than that. Or in the worst case scenario, I've had to actually shave some off this mount to make it work. So just some food for thought. Uh, I try to find things when I'm showing you guys stuff. Try and remember things that maybe are stuff that you'd want to know if you were building a full mod. Um, I'm actually going to flip this bike around for you guys. And we'll show you the other side. But it is a traditional Stage 3 Elka that came with the BBR Super Pro kits. Or normally if you were to buy a full kit from BBR for a bike, it would be Swinger. Uh, normally some type of shock relocation mount which this frame has has been built with a mx shock mount so there is no relocation mount on this it is one piece with the frame and it is built to work with a mx swing arm and shock so you couldn't put like an a style swinger on this frame they did make frames that were aftermarket frames that came with the ability to mount an A-style swinger. Um, I do not have one. I only ever wanted the MX-style swinger stuff, so this was perfect for me. Um, I actually found this bike in, I believe it was Ohio. I saw it in the comments on one of the pages on Facebook, one of the pit bike pages, and some guy said he was selling it. And I had been looking for a full mod 70 for a long time just to get my hands on one, whether it was a full bike or a frame kit or it just didn't matter. I just needed the frame itself to make something happen. I ended up finding this in Ohio and I jumped on it. I ended up driving the five hours there and then five hours back and it's been here ever since. And I think she's here to stay. Let me flip this bike around. I'll give you guys a look at the other side and see what else we can find. All right, now we got her flipped around. We're going to talk about one of the coolest things on this bike. Um, now, DASA, back in the day, from what I know, they made five of these exhausts for CRF 70s. Uh, one of the guys on the forum on Facebook, Planet Minis 2.0, he actually worked for DASA at one point, and this was information from him. So I can only assume that it's true. I mean, if it isn't, then, I mean, he's the closest guy to that situation. So I wouldn't know who else would know the truth more than him. But besides that, real nice fatty straight through pipe. And the can spillet tip, it is beautiful. It's just a really nice well-made exhaust it fits well no rubbing definitely probably won't see one of those again or see one for sale so definitely neat to have that i got lucky it was on the bike when i bought it so that's sometimes why i buy these built bikes uh mainly for the fact that a lot of the parts that I want, I may not want everything on this bike, or it may not all be the best or up to snuff for me, but it gives you a really good platform to change the graphics, put what wheels you want on it, change the exhaust, really do whatever you want, but still have the base there. So have the motor, 
the frame and all those things that takes a lot of the stress out of building a full mod and also a lot of the cost so sometimes it's better to let somebody else pick up some of the costs it's kind of like buying you know a used car you didn't take the new car hit more or less um let's talk about the rear brake setup on this bike this is bbr's rear master mount so that mounts through the swing arm bolt and then there is one of the motor mount bolts that goes all the way through over here and that stabilizes it so that it stays straight and doesn't allow the the master to cock when you're braking when you're hitting the brake pedal this does have a bbr crf 50 slash crf 70 honda brake pedal which i really do like it does sit well sits in a nice spot it's good it's a good pedal um rear caliper kx65 that's the way to go there's your mount you can see obviously the axle bolt runs through that the there's actually like a um, a tab up here that holds this from moving and that's as basic as it is caliper mounts to that and then that all just sandwiches in there you can run a kx65 factory rotor with all that it works great so you don't need to spend the money on a gaffer if you don't want to um here's a better view of that motor mount over here it's a little bit more open on this side of the frame but Another unique bike she also has. I know there's some Sano lovers out there. Shoot. Sweet. She's a beauty. She's really fast. Definitely fun to ride. A little bit soft at this point. That's uh, part of the reason why I haven't finished this bike. Uh, it needs time put into the suspension to make it right, make it ride nice and ride flat for a bigger guy. So that is going to be the first step in what I do. I have a couple under other bikes under the knife, which is why I haven't uh, done a walkthrough of my black and gold mod or my DRZ bike, because those bikes are both having modifications done to them. And I will do a walkthrough of those bikes when they get finished. Uh, thanks for tuning in to Simply Minis once again. This video was a little bit quicker. I don't have as much time tonight as I did with the other Billetware KLX 110 mod, but hopefully you guys enjoy this one too. If you do, give it a like and subscribe. Stay tuned because I got more videos coming.